The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know I am determined to bring you back to your superpower self. All right, this is a interesting and fascinating topic. Is your bra killing you? Well, here to answer that question is medical anthropologist, Dr. Sydney Ross Singer. Dr. Singer is a medical anthropologist director for the Institute for the Study of Culturogenic Disease and a pioneer of applied medical anthropology. So fascinating. Using his training in medicine, biochemistry and anthropology, Sid, along with his co-researcher and wife, Soma, have made numerous groundbreaking discoveries into the cultural causes of disease. They became breast cancer researchers when Soma discovered a lump in her breast and performed the world's first study into the link between bras and breast cancer, published in the book, Dress to Kill. For 30 years, Sydney and Soma have been warning women about the hazards of bras with dozens of studies uh, on women internationally now confirm confirming the bra cancer link. Their work has transformed the bra industry and the culture and has saved millions of women from experiencing breast pain, cyst, and cancer. Welcome to the show, Dr. Singer. It's so good to have you here. Well, thank you. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. This, this is such an important topic. We have this, so I have a 13-year-old daughter and you know, she'll wear her bra at night. She has a sports bra and she'll wear it at night. And I'll be like, please take that off. Please take that off. You're blocking your lymphatics. And she's like, oh, mom, you and your holistic stuff. It never gets old. So anyhow, but all jokes aside, you know, what is it with our bras? Are bras causing breast cancer? What's going on here? Well, you know, back uh, ever since there have been uh, throughout history, when, when you have constrictive garments worn on the breast, it leads to breast disease. And mm. in our culture, um, in the 1930s, bras were actually used to minimize the breasts. Uh, women in the flapper years wanted to look very masculine and they wore tight, compressive bras. And doctors back then knew it was causing breast cancer. Dr. Mayo, of, who formed the Mayo Clinic, actually wrote in the 1930s about how tight breast garments and bras are causing breast cancer. Um, and they also knew, like you mentioned, the lymphatics. Mm -hmm. uh, we think this has to do with the lymphatic system. When you're wearing anything tight, especially a bra, which is like probably the tightest garment women wear, it, um, if, first of all, you know it's tight because it leaves marks in your skin. If you have any garment that leaves red marks or indentations in your skin, it's too tight. And what that tightness does is it compresses the lymphatic system, which is the circulatory pathway of the immune system. And, um, and it's a passively draining system. So what happens is your, your bloodstream, which is under the pressure of a pump, delivers nutrients uh, and oxygen, which ooze out in fluid out of the capillaries to bathe the tissues. Our cells are basically bathing in a fluid. And this nutrient-rich, oxygen-rich fluid is provided by the bloodstream. And then waste products are released from the cells and any toxins that were in the bloodstream from our polluted air, food and water and medications, whatever, all those chemicals are, are being introduced to your breasts by the bloodstream. And then the lymphatic system takes this lymph fluid that's bathing these cells and drains it uh, to through tiny microscopic vessels that uh, called lymphatic vessels that then drain to lymph nodes. And for the breast, most of that's in the armpit. So this fluid is draining out toxins and, and waste products and, and um, in is essential part of the circulatory pathway of the breast. Now, when you have any garment that compresses the breasts uh, and tries to reshape them for fashion reasons, which your bras do, it impairs this lymphatic flow. And you have a backup of fluid because this is the, normally it has to leave through the lymphatic. So it backs up and women will experience, basically they have chronic lymphedema from in the breast, from the bra, mm. and they'll experience pain from the pressure and then cysts will develop over time as the fluid collects in certain tissue spaces these cysts some women get aspirated uh by needle and you know pulling out the fluid and um, they don't realize this you get rid of the bra that fluid goes away um and then also eventually fiber fibrous tissue would develop scar tissue inside these cysts, and then you get fibrocystic breast disease. And over time, it just leads to cancer because there's a total breakdown in the integrity of, of the tissue. If, if you have toxic 
tissue that, you know, toxic breasts that are sitting wow. in their own waste products day after day, year after year, for some women 24 mm seven, -hmm. you know, over time, that's going to take its toll and the immune system can't fight back. I mean, it's being, the immune system fights cancer cells all the time. We have cancer cells that develop in our bodies all the time with errors in, in, reprodu in, in cellular reproduction. Um, and we normally have a very effective way of eliminating that through the immune system. Mm -hmm. But if you compress and constrict any part of your body, the immune system can't get to it properly. So wow. you're creating an environment ripe for that. Not to mention the fact that bras also heat the breasts. Some people think that might be the reason for the bra cancer link as well. Also, bras have toxins in them. They're made with chemicals that uh, from storage chemicals like formaldehyde to dyes and other you know chemicals made in the manufacturer and you're wearing them intimately with your skin, which sweats and absorbs these chemicals. So it delivers some of these toxins. Some of them are carcinogens, they, they could cause cancer. So the BRAC can both deliver the carcinogens as well as prevent the proper removal. And what we did was, um, well, you know, we got involved, as you said, when my wife discovered right. Islam. And we did the world's first study looking at nearly 5,000 US women about from five major cities, about half of them had had breast cancer. Nobody else looked at this as far as we could tell. Besides understanding the link, there was never a full-blown bra and breast cancer study until we did it in the early 90s. And what our results were, you know, half of the women had breast cancer. We wanted to see, okay, if bras are causing the problem, you'd imagine then that women who are who have breast cancer must have been using the bras differently. Right. And we found they indeed were. They were less sensitive to the discomforts. They were willing to put up with it, which is what training bras, by the way, are for. They also wore their bras tighter and longer than women who don't have breast cancer. We were asking about past bra habits. And um, it, it was amazing, amazing discovery to us. My wife took off her bra and her lump went away, um, but also she was pregnant at the time. There's a long story with that, which we discuss in in Dress to Kill. We were like so amazed that something so simple as a constrictive garment and compression of the breast by, by tight clothes mm -hmm. can uh, lead to cancer and, and other problems. Wow. And what was amazing is nobody was looking at it because in this culture, bras are normal. And it, even discussing it back in the 90s, which is like 30 years ago already, they it was so taboo to even discuss breast issues. Mm -hmm. uh, even breast massage was like really, would, you know, you couldn't say it without blushing. And the whole issue of breasts, anything related to breasts is taboo. So the result was this, this whole theory, which makes so much sense to people once you think about it, was the kind of thing that it, it just culturally was an, an, um, an inconvenient truth. Women had to face the fact that maybe they have to dress differently. Mm. Um, maybe they're giving themselves disease by constricting and following fashion guidelines. And why didn't anybody tell them? And then the medical industry is feeling well, we haven't used bras in our research protocols. And if we're ignoring that, and that's important, all of our research is flawed, like right. doing lung cancer research and ignoring smoking, which they right. did in the 40s and 50s. So here's a huge variable that affects breast physiology, obviously, like tight shoes affect the feet. You know, what affects the breast? Tight bras obviously affect the breast. They're used to even dry up women from lactating. I mean, they have physiologic effects. And if they're tight, a tight bra stops lactation. Right. So why have we been ignoring that? Well, our job was after we found this out, we tried notifying women's groups and cancer groups and the government and they all ignored us. I mean, somebody saying bras are causing cancer just raised giggles and discomfort rather than serious scientific scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And over time, we just kept the message going out. We did our own second study, this one in Fiji, where we found that there's a culture where half the women were bra free back in the 90s. And we found that the ones who were getting breast cancer, which was relatively rare in Fiji until bra usage came into fashion, mm. the ones who were getting breast cancer were the bra users, the ones working as nurses or in the in the resorts. So you'll have a village with the same genetics and the same diet and the ones working in the resort next to the village yeah. had to wear bras and they were the ones getting breast disease. Yeah. And many, so it was finally, studies have been done around the world now confirming this, but there's still tremendous resistance in the United States, especially because of a very powerful bra industry that's been fighting this. Although there are now, there are now at least half a dozen patents that I know of for new bras designed to be less constrictive based on our research. They actually cite dress to kill mm -hmm. as the reasons for their new product. And there are, um, 
and as I said, more there are studies around the world showing not only this, but bras cause other problems too. I mean, they're the leading cause of all breast disease because you, you know think about what you're doing to your breasts when you constrict right. them. Right. So breast pain and and breast cysts. We're talking about over fifty percent of the women who wear bras have those problems. Hmm. And the bra industry admits like 90% are wearing them too tightly. They're not even wearing the right size. Although getting the right size bra is confusion because sizing is different between companies. And how can you wear a properly fitted push-up bra? By definition, it's too tight. Right. So the whole concept is sizing. Wow. And, and you know, breasts are hard to, they're hard to fit into a garment. Breasts are, first of all, they're asymmetric usually in women. Mm -hmm. The left breast is usually larger than the right. And yet the bra cups are identical size when you buy them. So that means you either fit it to your smaller breast or your larger breast. But if you fit it to the smaller, the larger one's gonna be extremely tight. Mm -hmm. So the whole garment, unless you're like the queen of England and getting, you know, you have a royal uh, bra maker, yeah. you're not going to get a customized thing. Plus your breasts change throughout the month. Right. When your period's coming, your breasts are bigger. Yeah. So you need, you know, they're more constrictive, which is why women complain about cysts and pain just before their period. And when they get rid of the bra, all of these problems go away. I'll tell you about our bra free study in, in a bit, but I'm going to come up for air because I need <laughs> you, you, I wanted you to get all this out there. This is such important stuff and it's frustrating you know, that we're not hearing about this. I don't think women talk about this. I'm not hearing about it. I'm not hearing it discussed. And in some ways, I'm sure you're following all the breast implant stuff as well. And it's like that same thing where these topics are kind of brushed under the rug and not really accounted for either because the lobby's too large or the industry's too large, or we just don't want to accept the fact. I'm so curious, when was the first bra on the scene? Do you know, do you know that historically when the first bra kind of came, when did women start wearing bras? Well, it was about the uh, turn of the uh, 1900s, you know, okay. early 1900s is when bras came in, the late 1800s. And um, yeah, but they, they've they taken on many different forms since then. Our book right. came out when the Wonder Bra came out. So mm -hmm. the whole idea of pushing them up and creating yeah. cleavage, you can't do that without con constriction and compression. So we'd, and the weird thing is, you know, as a physician, you understand when you took, when did you ever hear of the effect of tight clothing on circulation? in medicine, in medical, they never talk oh, about it. Right, I didn't, it's, it's so, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But it's so obvious, Yeah, it's one of these obvious cultural, so that's what I do as a medical anthropologist. I, I left medicine because, I mean, I've been trained in biochemistry right. and anthropology and medicine, and I left medicine because it doesn't think about these things. It never thinks about the culture. It, it tries to just patch people up with symptom relief, send them back out and never addresses the cause, which most of the time is the way we're doing things to ourselves because of a stupid culture that doesn't care about our natural needs. It's all about marketing. It's all about with bras, about creating insecurities in women. And frankly, it's a breast fetish. It's a fetish garment that really, why make an issue out of your breast shape? That's mm -hmm. absurd. And and what, what really is crazy and shows you how deeply um, distorted the issue is with our culture when they have um, professional women think in our culture that it's more professional to have a bra than not. Well, when you think about it, why would your breast positioning or shape have anything to do with work unless you're a prostitute or right. some reason your breasts are an issue? Why would a professional woman? And, you know, um, and that's something I've run into so many times. I mean, a lot of women will want to be bra free but they feel I got to go when I go to work, I have to have a certain appearance. And even though the dress codes aren't explicit, they will implicitly, it feels like I need to wear a bra or I look sloppy or unprofessional. Well, the good news is that you can't, they can't do that anymore. That's considered sex discrimination and mm -hmm. a human rights violation. You can't make women wear things that men don't have to wear because they're women. Women are not objects. And that's the whole problem with the bras. It turned breasts into objects and fashion accessories. And women feel that they can't even dress without this tight garment on. And um, the good news is with COVID and lockdowns, women are doing it now at home. They're comfortable. Right. And they're stopping wearing bras. And there's been a huge trend change out of bras and towards bra-free and uh, comfort. 
So I'm really happy about that. That's the silver lining of the COVID camp, uh, the COVID right. pandemic, is that it's made us look at our lifestyles and change them. And some of those changes are going to be positive changes because we we've, we've been living, you know, in in ways that have been. So harmed. are you are you suggesting women just don't need a bra at all? Like, what about all the sports bras and women that are larger breasted that talk about the discomfort? you know, when they're exercising and they don't have that added yeah. support and things like that. What's your opinion? Like we shouldn't be wearing them or we should only wear them like three or four hours a day at most or for a night out or like what sort of your, if you had to put some boundaries around it, what would you say? Yeah. Well, you know, if I were to give you the ideal boundaries, they would be, of course, you don't need a bra. Bras mm -hmm. are absurd. They also create droopy breasts mm -hmm. because the breasts become dependent on the bra. They create a dependency. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ligaments don't get exercised, so they atrophy. And when women stop wearing bras, they discover a whole bunch of things. First of all, their breasts lift in tone, especially if they're premenopausal. And it's amazing then. And that's for two reasons. One, the ligaments strengthen. And two, they stop getting lymphedema, so their breasts aren't as heavy and pendulous. You know, they're not as filled with fluid. The second thing they discover is they can breathe easier without a tight band around the chest. Mm -hmm. so all of them say that. When I'm doing an international bra-free study, which is free, and it's and we follow. We just ask women to stop wearing a bra, and we follow yeah. what happens to them. Wow, it's amazing. There were studies that already shown that if you wear a bra, these studies came out of, of Japan. If you wear a bra, it causes changes to your autonomic nervous system. And both the parasympathetic and sympathetic, it actually increases body core body temperature. It lowers uh, salivary melatonin levels. It slows digestion and causes constipation in some women wearing a bra. And it affects their menstrual cycle even. Women have told me getting rid of the bra that their menstrual cycles have normalized. Hmm. And, I mean, it's amazing. And their self-esteem changes because if every day of your life you're conditioned from puberty to thinking that you're somehow inadequate without a bra and that you can't go out in public without a bra and it, your whole being is reduced to this breast image and you finally say the hell with that, I'm going to be myself and be comfortable, women discover that they get to like themselves better, they feel more self-esteem, more empowered, and they even get to like their breasts better. They become their body image disorder that was created that the bras are basically serving can get healed by no longer doing it, no longer wearing a bra. As for large-breasted women, they don't need bras. And the reason they think they do is because they're so dependent on it from wearing it all the time. If they stopped wearing, and you notice the pressure, the grooves in their shoulders oh, yeah. of okay. large-breasted women, well, that causes paresthesias in the hands yep. and arms from pressure on the nerves. Yeah. And it causes headaches. And I mean, think about the amount of pressure that bra has yeah. to hold up large breasts to make grooves in the shoulders. When women, you know, large-breasted women, and this is the thing, this is how we were brainwashed. They used to think this about corsets. They used to say corsets oh, were yeah. the same. Yeah. It's the same with bras. We don't need them. The body was not designed with a flaw that needs lingerie. It, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. I, and I know it, it sounds ridiculous when you think about it. Like, of course, the human body shouldn't need to have some artificial harness for the breast to hold them up. I mean, that's absurd. But we live with it so much that it seems normal that the doctor you ask about it, if it's a woman, she may be wearing one. And if it's a man, his wife wears one. Right, so there's, it's cultural. That's the problem with a culturogenic disease. Culturogenic means culture caused. And it's not so easy as just discovering the physiological link of constriction and lymphatics and cancer. We have to get past all this other cultural garbage that, that blinds us. So why has the breast cancer, I mean, you know, breast cancer is a, a booming industry, right? I mean, there's a lot going on in that world. Why have they not latched onto this as a potential, you know, cause something to work on with women, a uh, public service, just like smoking, like why, you know, why is this not, you know, really getting the attention it needs to bring? We, you know, we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month, every October, we all participate in that. We all wear pink. We all talk about all the different things. I've always come at it from a East-West medicine kind of perspective, you know, like what is your anger, your emotions, your hormone detox patterns, all that other, all the biology and biochemistry and emotional stuff. Never thought about our clothing as contributing. More recently have been educated about how implants are involved as well in that conversation. Why is the cancer industry not recognizing some of these things that are very simple but significant 
while the rest of us chase our tails trying to either get patients better, treat them, or as a, as a patient, like trying to understand what happened. Yeah. Well, um, I think I, I did speak with the American Cancer Society on this. They've been opposed to this ever since we came out um, with this information. Why? Because it was a knee jerk, bras, cancer, absurd. Mm -hmm. It can't be. And then you look it up and there aren't any articles because people have kept on saying that we're a bra using culture. So there was no research funding. There was no interest. Plus, who's going to make money on this except right. maybe a bra company selling another bra, right. which they tried, by the way. And I've been approached by so many of them saying, you know, we have this new product and I don't endorse any products. I think, you know, but but that's how they make money on it. Right. And the cancer industry they treat, they, they want people to get mammograms. They want to keep the fear going. They don't want you to feel like, oh, I can just stop wearing a bra and I'm going to be okay. Right. They've spent decades beating you up with mammograms. Mm -hmm. So they're afraid of that. And also the American Cancer Society told me directly, the head of their, their communications, I mean, he's been like my nemesis for years trying to stop me. Every time I get information out, they'll, oh, there's no evidence. Even though there are studies, oh, there's no evidence. And because of the American Cancer Society, they, they're like, nobody can trump their statements. Mm -hmm. Like they are the ultimate authority. And we have an authoritarian structure, which is one of the problems, a culture, mm -hmm. cultural problem, that just because someone has a, a, a degree after their name, they are suddenly, you know, all knowing and right. everything they say is true. Right. And you can't. So the fact is, he said there is a very high bar for this type of a thing because they don't want to fight the culture. They right. sell bras. Their whole purpose, they sell mastectin bras. The purpose of places like the ACS is to make cancer more acceptable and less stigmatic. They don't want people to feel a stigma that they lost their breasts or whatever, or that they're any different. They want to normalize cancer. So they want to make you look normal. They'll give you the wig. They'll give you the bra. They'll make you look like a regular woman. But if the regular woman is getting cancer because of that look, mm -hmm. they're not going to question that. They don't want to challenge the culture. They don't want to lose donations. They And this is an interesting thing. I want to know your opinion on this. They don't want to blame women for this disease. And I've seen that in writing mm -hmm. by some doctors who are opposed to this, thinking this is terrible. You're blaming the victim. Mm -hmm. Women are victims of cancer, of breast cancer. We don't want them to feel responsible. And yet, if you're going to be responsible for your own health, you got to accept the fact that you're going to screw up sometimes and you better take responsibility. Yeah. But they don't want women, they feel that women will be offended and upset to think that they did this to themselves. Most likely, they're going to be upset that their doctor didn't tell them this. Well, that's and patronizing, that's what, right? That's a part of the paternalistic system of medicine where we get patronized, you know, because I know it's better for you than you know it's better for you, that type of like, you know, and I, and I think this generation, we're done, like, right? The current generation of women is done with that. I think, you know, just like we want equal rights and equal voice, we want to accept responsibility for whatever it is that's going on. And, and we have a responsibility to our physical health. And I don't think most women I meet today are not playing the blame game when it comes to their physical health. They understand that is something to, especially our audience, they understand is something to chase after, to guard, to protect. What would you tell the women listening today to do? What would you tell me to do? I have a 13 year old daughter that, you know, wants to do her own thing. What would you tell us all to do? Don't wear a bra at all. It's not, you know, you just don't need it. What if they feel uncomfortable or the reverse? You know, if they do have larger breasts or larger nipples with it, that are more obvious through their clothing, are they being more, are they going to be perceived to be more sexually provocative? Like, what would you have women do? We have to change the culture so that it's not just what women do. Men have to do something too. Mm -hmm. Men have responsibility for keeping uh, sexuality out of non-sexual situations, just like anybody does. And if a woman- well, That's a big culture <laughs> Sorry. That's essential. Just as it's, I just know, as, but how? Goodness you tell, gracious. You tell them off. Just as if someone makes a racist yeah. remark or yeah. a sexist remark, if they treat, if they make a remark about your breasts or they're get, making you uncomfortable for some reason, obviously making you uncomfortable, and you have every right to call them out for it for yeah. any as for they would for any other sexual thing. That's that's part of the responsibility. The other thing is you have to stop caring about what men think, that's and true. you know. So in, and you have to when it comes to children. You don't want to start them on training bras, which is basically 
getting them used to the discomfort of the bra and mm -hmm. to the feeling that they need one to be in public. I mean, that's that's where you separate the the, the girls from the boys. The girls, you got to start covering yourself. That there's some shame associated with it. There's whatever to keep girls like that. That has to stop. And you know, right. now if you want to celebrate their sexuality, um, I'm not, not sure why you'd want to celebrate your adolescent sexuality yeah, yeah, but if you, trust me you, yes i'm <laughs> sure but if you did there are other ways to recognize entry into adult into adulthood than the rite of passage of a bra you right. could give her a camisole or something else that that feels feminine mm -hmm. but isn't constrictive i mean the whole answer here is constriction as for nipples you you hit you hit the nail on the head because nipples are a major Nipple phobia is a major problem that women have, and the media even when they show images of oh, yeah. of women, they'll they'll blur out the nipples. Like, but men's nipples are okay, and mm -hmm. the free the nipple movement. By the way, there's a free the nipple movement that mm -hmm. is growing, trying to fight that, made of celebrities, and it's a very growing movement where women are right. saying, "Why can men be you know top free at the beach and get sun, but a woman can't?" Mm -hmm. And there are laws changing. I mean, this is discrimination to automatically sexualize a woman's breast. Is, is discrimination and objectification of women. And it's and if women buy into that, they objectify themselves. What does that do to you? Right. So we do need a fundamental transformation of a lot of things in this culture. And one of them is the sexual is the automatic sexualization of breasts and to make women have to participate in that. And as I said, or let me you also mentioned sports bras. They're yeah. very tight. They're not a good alternative for everyday wear. If you want to wear a bra while you're exercising for breast control, then go ahead. Like a man might wear a jock strap right. for ball control, right. okay? But if you want to wear one, fine, take it off right afterwards. Realize that the benefits of exercise are improved circulation, including lymphatic circulation, which increases over 20 fold with exercise. And if you're constricting and immobilizing your breasts while you're exercising, you're depriving them of the benefit of the exercise. In fact, breasts need to move and bounce to properly pump the lymph through the breast tissue, because these lymph vessels that I mentioned, mentioned, which originate in the breast tissue and are microscopic, they have one-way valves that keep the lymph moving towards the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, lymph goes back into the bloodstream, but the process goes through these valves, and these, and it's propelled by pressure from the body, from even subtle things like breathing propels your lymph, movements, massage. So as your breasts move, they'll pump the lymph fluid and through the, these vessels. And if you immobilize the breasts, I mean, think about the average woman wearing a tight bra to cover up everything, keep it from moving. Think of the heat, the pressure, mm -hmm. the stagnation of the tissue, and she'll do this every day. Wow. So we need to address, that's the most important. These other issues of cultural acceptance are really minor. The culture can... And we've learned to accept lockdowns and masks. I mean, we are adaptive. Right. And if only we could learn to accept ourselves and listen to your body. I mean, the reason women whip, rip them off when they get home and the first thing they take off is their bra is because they're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If something is uncomfortable, it obviously is a message mm -hmm. from your body to your brain saying, this is bad for me. But the culture is there to interfere with that message and say, no, you got to do this. You're a better person by conforming than you are by being true to yourself and to your own nature. And that's the bad cultural message. This is why the culture gets in the way of health like yeah. crazy. I mean, here we have, an go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say your field is so fascinating because I wonder how many other diseases, conditions are more culturally based oh, versus, you know, versus all the things we study as doctors and physicians and things like that. Oh, so. I could tell you so many things. I mean, I've been studying that for years. And one of the bigger ones that beyond this is like sleep position. Mm -hmm. which affects circulation in the brain. And it's related to gravity, which is another thing you'll never see in a physiology book is the effect of gravity on your circulation. Mm -hmm. And when you're horizontal versus vertical, the relationship between your head and your heart are different. And there's a different gravity relationship and that affects brain circulation. They know about this from space medicine where there's zero gravity and there's fluid that shifts to the head. So the way people should be sleeping slightly elevated the head of the bed elevated and improves brain and heart circulation. We've done studies on that and that's related to migraines. That causes, that gets rid of migraines. Wow. Migraines are like a brain flush to get the fluid through, to get fresh fluid into your brain mm -hmm. that's been down all night. That's why they happen in the morning after a night of, of sleeping down, your eyes are puffy, your brain is puffy, your ears are puffy, your sinuses are puffy. You raise the head of the bed and all of those things change. 
even glaucoma is affected by head elevation. And they've already done head elevation for glaucoma. They, wow. they have studies that show it. They use it already for like hiatal hernias and acid reflux. That same wedge or whatever you'd elevate on works perfectly for your brain. And that's another lifestyle because when we think of sleeping as flat and maybe even on your side or on your belly, all of those compress and cause problems and increase brain pressure when you turn your head to, it, to the side. You need to sleep on your back technically, but that's another study that, that we did. Uh, I've written a book about that and that wow. has had amazing uh, results. Something's another simple, simple mechanical issue. Constrictive clothing affects circulation. Obviously there's gonna be disease if you constrict it. And gravity affecting circulation mm -hmm. and again, that causes disease. So the idea, my theme that I've discovered in life is that if you don't circulate, you deteriorate. Yeah, and our that. bodies, yeah, our bodies have a great ability to heal. And when we could take in so much crap from our environment, we can have so much stress, we can have this and that, injuries, and we can overcome it most of the time. I mean, we have a tremendous ability to heal, mm -hmm. but that's only if your body is integrated working together as a whole, like it needs. And the only way it does that, if there's proper circulation, where all the cells are in communication, whenever you cut off anything, which tight clothing does all the time, which things like sitting on your leg or, or leaning a certain way all the time, cutting off circulation, and you won't know why. I, I met a woman once, for example, who was a young mother. She was holding her baby on her hip. You know how women will do that. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me she had to go to a doctor's appointment for carpal tunnel in her wrist. And I was wondering, you know, how are you getting, you know, what's the problem? And I'm looking at her and it's obvious. Mm -hmm. The baby was leaning right on her wrist right. and this was a new baby. So it was a new thing that she was doing, never did it before. So here's a new behavior with this baby leaning predominantly on one wrist, on one hip. And she never put two and two together to think I'm causing this by compressing my wrist. I think there's a lot of compression injuries that we don't even think about. And the idea that we even use elastic or ACE bandages for healing when what they do is constrict and how are we ever going to get any healing mm -hmm. and tissue cleansing when your lymphatics can't work in a constricted right. area. Right. So they wonder, why am I wearing this for a year and I'm still not better in my elbow or whatever? Circulation. I love massage. Breast massage is awesome, but don't expect to massage away years of constriction and continue wearing bras and think a massage is all I need. No, or think more iodine is all I need or better diet is all I need. All of those things affect the breast, but if you're constricting it, there's no way. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like choking someone in the neck. Right. It doesn't matter what diet they have. They won't be able to breathe and they'll die. And it's the same thing with the breast. So I suggest what women do, you know, you don't have to believe me, believe you, believe your own body. Try a self-study. This is what we call self. This is how we do research on humans. We give them a lifestyle information like this and suggest that you try it. See how you feel. You're the mm -hmm. expert on how you feel. Mm -hmm. So if you go without a bra for one month, you can wear a vest. You can wear t-shirts, camisoles, anything that you can even wear blouses that have ripples near the nipples. Mm -hmm. That's, that, I didn't All do right. that. Good job. <laughs> that really worked. Ripples near the nipples that keep your nipples hidden. Right. Wear loose clothing. You can wear pockets over your breasts so that it hides your nipples and your breasts. You can de-accentuate your breasts as much as you like if you're uncomfortable. But most of the discomfort is all psychological. So yeah. if you can get over that, that's great. But if you give yourself one month of that, you will get a new baseline of breast comfort as your lymphatics flush finally, your breasts flush out of toxins. They will actually perk get perky and healthier and feel better and you'll enjoy them moving more. You'll, you'll feel like a different woman. And I love it. I if, love you put it. That, if you right now think the bra you're wearing is comfortable and you go bra free for a month and you try putting that same bra back on, you will not be able to stand it. You will say, oh my God, is this uncomfortable? It's like, once you liberate yourself, you won't be able to go back. And that's why this is still alive, this issue after 30 years of repression, censorship, suppression, personal attacks against me, personal attacks against other people who supported this issue, the medical industry is thinking of losing billions by this and having to explain to women why for the last 30 years, they've been boohooing this whole thing and saying there shouldn't even be any further research. There's no studies that support this. 
I mean, there's been a systematic attempt, including Wikipedia. I mean, I wrote about this yeah. in, my, in my updated version of Dress to Kill. Yeah. I wrote about the censorship. I really, I call it the way well, it is. I know, we know, even seeing today's world, we know it's there and we know it's alive and well. And, you know, it's, I mean, we're out of time here, but I, we could talk about social media. We could talk about oh, yeah. PubMed. We could talk about all of it. And it's just so hard to get information and get good information, balanced information nowadays. And it's unfortunately true in medicine as well, for sure. So, so impressed with the work you're doing. The book is Dressed to Kill, the second edition. I want a copy of this. I want to read it and learn more for sure. I have so many women that come to me as patients and so many that follow and listen to me. And I think it's really important to get the word out and help, it, help them all understand how bras are impacting our lives. So thank you so much for joining me today. If folks want to learn more about you or your work, what's the best way for them to be connected? Well, I have two good websites. One is brasandbreastcancer.org, and okay. that'll give you background and information and references and stuff like that. The other is brafreestudy.org, and bra free Study is where you can find out about and join the International Bra Free Study, where, where we now have women from over 36 countries who are participating, and, and just they're going to be the, we're creating a cohort of the healthiest breasted women in the world because they don't have bras and they're aware of their breast health. And um, I mean, a lot of these women were wearing bras and they did have problems. As soon as they get rid of the bras, they tell us how they've improved mm -hmm. and it's absolutely incredible. Wow. So I, I think, as I said, the good thing about this is you could test it on yourself. We're not talking about a new drug or new therapy right. that requires you know, double blind studies. All we need to do is you try it and you see, you'll know if you feel I'll better. Check it out. I'm, I think I'm up for the challenge. I want to see. So you, maybe my daughter will do it with me. How's that? We, we can both do awesome. it. So we'll and if you have me back, have me back. I'd be, love to come back and hear yes. the experiences. Yeah. That would be great. There's so much to talk about here. I really appreciate it. I want to learn more too, you know, about just all the other things that you're seeing and about sleep and everything else. So we'll definitely reach back out. Awesome. But thank you so much for joining us and for everyone else. Thank you for watching this episode of Superwoman Wellness. Remember, you can rate and review it and share it with your friends. We're on Spotify and Apple iTunes as well. And I will see you guys next time.